at this juncture in computer science history, P and PM is the superior product to NPM and YARN with regards to installing and managing node package manager packages. The only other product that I can think of as faster than, than P and PM is something called BUN. But I know that some larger companies in the U US and the UK are hesitant to use BUN for various reasons to include its newness. So for that reason, I'm going to show you how to convert to ENPM from NPM. Now, with regards to the installation process of installing PNPM, I do not recommend watching any videos for that. You can certainly watch a video as to why you should use PNPM as opposed to NPM and YARN. But I do not recommend watching videos when it comes to installation. And the reason for that is because the ecosystem changed so very fast in JavaScript that by the time you get to watching that video, it's already outdated. And so for that reason, I actually recommend reading the guide created by the, NP, the PNPM makers themselves to uh, install it in your local environment or in your CICD pipeline, such as GitHub Actions. What I'm going to show you in this video is to convert a Next.js project that was spun up using NPM, the standard methodology to spun up a Next.js app, and we are going to convert it from NPM over to PNPM. This is a 10 stack query infinite scrolling application. And I created this application over a year ago, and I've updated all the packages to the latest version, with the exception of ESLint. I think I'm done with ESLint at this point. I'm switching over to something called Biome. Biome. And then uh, I'm going to leave Tailwind CSS alone for the time being. But I'll, but the Next.js packages and the React packages, React, React DOM, Tan stack query, and the React uh, intersection observer package has been updated. And as you can see here, I have already deleted the node modules. Okay. Uh, you can do that in the command line with um, issuing the command rm rf uh, node um, uh, node modules and then i've deleted the package lock that json file now we still have the package.json file obviously right but i have i have deleted the package lock that json file because that is associated with npm before we continue, um, if you're the type of person that hates typing in the terminal and you wish to type as little as possible, and you think that typing P and PM is way too many characters, what you could do is in your jish.rc uh, file, jish configuration file, or your bash configuration file, or whatever the equivalent is, uh, in a Windows machine, you can alias the command pn, Papa November, to be pnpm. That way, when you issue a pnpm command, you only have to type uh, pn rather than pnpm. Of course, you can alias to, to this to whatever you want, but pn is what the 
ENPM team recommends. Of course, you can call it Taylor Swift if you want to, but uh, that would be way too many characters. So once I have successfully installed PNPM in my machine, I'm going to install packages just like I do with NPM I would yarn. So I'm going to issue the command NP PNPM, but I have an alias, right? So PN install or just PNI for short. And then it will install the packages um, that it needs. Of course, it's complaining about ESLint because, like, you know, like I said, um, I'm done with ESLint. ESLint might not be done with me, but I'm, for now, I'm done with it. Now, please, please note that instead of a package lock.json file, PNPM creates and uses the YAML format, which if you've done DevOps, uh, which many developers front end and back end have done these days, um, is great for configuration, right? Now, just like with package lock.json file, the team, the development team, needs to maintain a primary copy of this log file in your production and development um, repository. Now, that way it could be a single source of truth. And that way, uh, when you promote the app to the various environment, it stay consistent, the same packages, the same version of packages are installed every time. Okay, it's just like uh, maintaining a, a master copy of uh, of a file. In this case, you know, master copy, primary copy, whatever terminology you want to use. Okay, and this is no different than before with with package lock. Okay, so be careful with that. I know that a lot of people confuse. Well, what, should I commit? Should I commit my package lock uh, to um, repo or not? Yes, you should, but. Only the primary one, only the most senior. When you're doing code review, when you see that this file is checked in, make sure that it is intentionally checked in, right? And the changes you want is approved by the code reviewer. That could be your staff, software engineer, your senior software engineer in the team. And obviously, you don't want you don't want this file to change every time. You want to maintain a primary copy in your repository, just like with package lock. Okay, hopefully I've made that clear. With respect to the scripts portion of the package.json file, you will run it exactly as, bef as before. For example, to run dev, you would, previously you run npm run dev, right? So here you would just do a pn run dev, and it would start. Um, no big changes there, okay. And then, if you want to build your next uh, your next JS app, you will run pn run build. And then um, there you can see it's, it's doing its thing there. And then I, once I go into the next the dot next directory, there we go, okay. Now let's go ahead and run this application and have a look in the browser. So here we are in the browser. Let's make sure that it's doing the infinite scrolling thing. Okay. All right. It's loading more. Loading more. Nothing, nothing more to load. Let's make sure that there's no errors in the console. Yay. No errors. This thing here, by the way, that's that's just the the dev tool for TanStack Query, uh, v5. I, I've I've included that in the dev environment, so that's what that's not part of the app. Well, I mean, it is it is part of the app, but it's not part of the code. It's just the uh, it's just uh, a tool like a React tool f for TanStack Query. Okay, um, let's go back to the code. Yeah, so that's that was relatively painless, right? And in return for that little amount of work, you're going to be rewarded with much faster build time locally as well as in your pipeline. I will include links to the documentation in the description of the video. 
If you like the type of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. It doesn't cost you anything. Thank you for watching my video, and I'll see you next time.